I think so staying with us. So we're going to go straight to what we found in the news. I'll come to EC of Fordale. Hmm. What did you find for us? In the news today, Buhari signs law criminal criminalizing non-wearing of face mask. Mm -hmm. This story actually struck me because first things first, there are two sides to this story. We, uh, there's a school of thought that says Nigerians like it hot, hot. So when you rule them with iron fist, they listen to you. Mm. But there's also the school of thought that this is also going to serve as a level of, uh, some level of uh, extortion. Mm. Because the, e the operatives or the people that are going to Enforce, implement it yeah. are going to use it as a yastic mm -hmm. to take advantage of the populace. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where we are going to go with this right now, but the key thing is that either of these are going to happen. Well, is it possible that this will stop um, or help curb COVID? It's possible, okay? Because it happened in Taiwan, for mm. example. Mm. So I think it's a good, um, it's a good step, yeah. ah. but I hope that the implementers or the executors of the so that's the, well, I, I like what the it. angle you brought about yes. bribery and, you corruption, know, yeah, exactly. bribe, because you see, corruption will always raise ugly head. Absolutely. Like, outside the country, like where my sister stays in France, in fact, if they catch you, they're not even, there's no even question. <laughs> Fine you, in fact, some they bundle you, you know, I, I mean, we saw some videos now, where they mm -hmm. bundle you and throw you and back throw into you your house. Do you understand? So it's, I mean, if they would really mm -hmm. enforce it. Mm -hmm. And this if is, the person that is even going to come mm, will be wearing a mask mm -hmm. when enforcing it, Wait that's now. another thing. You know, like, I, there was a time road safety officials stopped me on the road and all they were talking. And I said, see, what is more important to you? No, not even COVID-9. This is just general. Okay. What is more important to you? Is it my safety? Because you are trying to educate me on the safety or the money you're trying to extort. Mm -hmm. Which one is important? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with COVID and the nose mask. Exactly. If you stop me on the road, mm -hmm. what is important for you as an official trying to enforce the nose mask wearing. Exactly. Is it for me to bribe you mm. or it is for me to wear my mask? Mm. Right? So those are the kind of questions and I hope they will not use it. I mean, it's a valid, it's a valid, um, totally. listen, because we're in Nigeria. It, it, yeah, we're in Nigeria. Look at what happened with names. Oh, ha, 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 ha. I don't want to go there. Mm. <laughs> I know I'm going <laughs> to... let me come to you. <laughs> what did you find for okay, us in so, the news? I guess we're all keeping with um, COVID-related stories. Uh, so my headline says, is Dubai's party over? Record COVID cases, countries raising barriers spark fear of a new lockdown. Um, so we're seeing countries now banning flights from, um, from Dubai in the UAE. Um, they have had a spike in cases over the, so over the Christmas period, I mean, throughout 2020, they kept their cases low. Um, and as such, they were deemed a safe travel location or safe tra tra tourism location. Uh, which led to a lot of people. I mean, I know a lot of people in December who left the country. Uh, our very own. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was a top destination for, for, you know, for tourists. And they were one of the, you know, they actually were touting themselves as a success story, really, in terms of managing COVID. But now they're seeing cases in excess of 3,000 a day. Hmm. When I was researching this story, I actually saw um, somewhere where it, there was some conspiracy you know, there's always theories. Hmm. Uh, someone is claiming that actually their cases daily is more like 10,000 um, rather than the 3,000 plus that they're hmm. reporting. Hmm. But, but the thing that stood out for me um, in this story is I think that a lot of countries who took drastic measures immediately, so back in March, um, this second wave is now hitting more because look at Nigeria, right? We're starting to reopen COVID centers because we felt like, oh, we didn't do too badly. We're doing great. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we're having to reopen COVID centers. But in contrast to what we would normally expect in Nigeria, they've actually fired their um, their health um, minister. minister. Mm -hmm. They fired him uh, and they haven't commented as to why. But I mean, if you put two and two together, right, this could 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 really be seen as really taking strong, uh, strict actions and strong measures. I mean, the story lists all the other um, things that have been banned, gathering down from 30 to 10, um, and, you know, uh, sporting activities, and uh, sorry, not sporting activities, restaurants and entertainment activities are also being uh, streamlined mm -hmm. again. So they're putting through a lot of measures. But of course, if you're a tourist destination and other countries are banning flights coming from your, your country, 
what automatically means is you're being demarketed, right? Because I won't fly to you if I can't fly back to my country. Yeah. So they have a lot of uh, potentially a tough time ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This COVID matter is not ending. No. <laughs> All right, so my story is not so much um, COVID related, but um, I thought it was worthy of mention. They said the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center and Transparency International um, Nigeria has given reasons why Nigeria ranked worse in corruption um, per perception index since 2015. So I think we dropped um, places, 13 places down. Yeah. So from a hundred and I think we're now a hundred and um, eight uh, forty sixth or so out of one hundred and eighty countries, mm -hmm. right? I think that's the number. If I can, if I can correctly, forty six um, or forty seven, one hundred and forty six. I think okay. that's what I'm seeing here. But um, the points now they have five points why they say that Nigerians' ranking dropped in the corruption in the index, index of the yeah corruption perception index. It says number one is the absence of transparency in the COVID nineteen pandemic. That's mm. one. Number two is nepotism in the public service appointment and promotion. Number three mm. is at lack of adequate anti-corruption legal framework and interference. Mm. And um, four is prevalence of bribery mm. <laughs> and extortion in, in the Nigerian police, what we just talked about. Exactly. And five, security sector corruption. Uh. So those are, if you read through the story, I mean, in the punch, you would see that those were the five... Um, um, what's it called, um, parameters that they use to measure this ranking that we have dropped now. You know, and this is just what you were just saying now about the nose mask and all of exactly. that, you know, and, and this is the fear. I mean, when Nigeria, when we're not doing things right, you, you think the world is not watching, but they are watching. They are you know? watching. They are watching. And so that's, I mean, that's from um, Transparency International. It's sad. Yeah. It's so sad. Well, did you want to add anything to the and conversation? I, I think that yeah, has go ahead. also affected our, our passports as well. Ah. I think that has. Uh, I think Once they say green passports like this, they'll the keep ranking you on. Has actually even dropped currently. <laughs> yeah. I think it's about the 97th now in the in the world wow is that so, so? i didn't bad. i didn't read that part of, oh bad. god help us it's bad god help us all right so um Uti, do you want to add anything or just... yeah i was just going to say that you know nigeria has been synonymous with corruption my entire life hmm. and we don't we don't even have or we don't find circumstances they're few and far between where we see little light you know like light shining moments in the dark where nigeria has sort of said been able to demonstrate that it's not you know we're against corruption mm -hmm. in nigeria it's all sound bites we're doing this against corruption we don't see it we have efcc we have in we have all these different bodies mm -hmm. but nobody feels the impact we're still corruption central we're still you know i often joke that if we could as nigerians put all the effort and brain power that we put into committing fraud or you know being corrupt mm -hmm. into um the positive i mean i'm not sure america could keep up with us mm -hmm. but alas this is where we find ourselves ah mm. this is where we find we found ourselves so so that's why we're having this our conversation today because this is also part of it it's also tying up very nicely to the talk today because we saw the video that um former president of Sanjay that went viral i think uti you're the one that shared it to the group last week you know, we saw the video and we thought it was worthy to have that conversation, right? You know, when we're talking about leadership and the structure of Nigeria, I mean, if I hope our leaders are watching to see, you know, because, you know, sometimes when you're silent about some things, it's also silence also... It's consent. It's also consent, right? Totally. You're, yeah, you're speaking, you're speaking, even though you're quiet about certain things. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll take a very short break. When we return, we'll have our conversation for tonight. Stay with us. We'll be right back.